Hello, uh, I have a letter here about the Canton Fair and it reads uh, Dear Easy Armix, we're coming over to the Canton Fair in about a week and wanted to inquire about how much you would charge to provide a translator. Also, any other tips on doing the Canton Fair would be most welcome. Uh, sincerely, Julia, Wal Julia Walker, Albury, Australia. Um, okay, Julie, well, the first thing is we can provide you with somebody, however, our staff are all much more than translators, therefore, uh, we would charge a lot more than just a translator. Um, our account manager, our account managers, we would charge out at two hundred and fifty dollars per day. Um, in a, in China, a translator you can probably get for fifty to eighty dollars a day. Um, having said all that, um, the Canton Fair, with it being an export orientated show, uh, all the exhibitors um, will basically have good English speaking salespeople um, on their stands. Um, so, for this reason, to be honest, uh, we rarely send somebody down to translate because it's basically uh, not required. Um, the only exceptions would be is if we've got customers that um, need to have specific meetings with suppliers or are really trying to. Um, uh, get more input from us, um, just more than translating at the show. Um, so I hope that answers you, your first question about the uh, the cost of doing that. Um, I mean, in terms of the, the other tips I can give you, I can probably give you quite a few because I've, I've done the Canton Fair quite a few times over the years. Um, the first and the main tip that I'd give you is um, however much time you have at the Canton Fair is to be careful how you allocate that time. Um, so if you're there for four days for example, what you might want to do on the first day and a half is literally walk up and down all of the aisles in each of the different sections and cover all of the area. Um, not talking to anybody basically and if you see any, any booth that looks interesting just make a note of the number and then with the rest of your time you'll then have uh, you'll then have covered all the ground and you'll have a list of numbers of all the booths that actually look interesting um, you might want to rank those in terms of you know three star being the most interesting, two star okay, and then and then one star because even then because the show is that big, sometimes you struggle to to get around them. Uh, but basically, by having a, a basic strategy to do it that way, um, you get to cover all of the uh, all of the Canton Fair basically. Um, to do it that way is also quite a lot of hard work because um, because of the sheer size of the place. Um, so that would be my first tip for you. Um, the second tip would be um, basically when you go to these uh, trade shows or any trade show, but um, the Canton Fair is no exception, um, you often get very bad manufacturers or trading companies that have very big and beautiful and pretty looking stands. Uh, you know, even the products on the stands are, are, are you know, very good, etc. Um, and uh, basically, don't be fooled by this. If you're going to be doing some uh, large scale purchases, as you're already in China anyway, um, don't just take it for granted that because they've got a, a flashy stand um, that they're actually going to manufacture a good product. Um, I say if you're in China anyway, I would mind it would be to go out and see the uh, the factory. So after you've done the Canton Fair, maybe allow you know three or four days to go and go and view some of these factories and uh, see what they're actually like on the ground. Um, on the opposite end of the scale, sometimes you get very good manufacturers that are so confident and proud and uh, they know that they are one of the leaders for that particular type of product. They basically don't make any effort to market, so they have the smallest, um, the smallest stand and uh, they just don't look very good at, at a trade show basically. So um, I say when you're at a trade show, you know, good marketing and bad marketing, um, try and see through, uh, through all of that. Uh, and as I always say, you know, there's, no, uh, there's no substitute to actually going out to the factories. And, uh, and seeing what, the, uh, what, what they're actually like and the standard that they're actually producing too. Um, so that would be my, uh, my second tip. Uh, the third tip would be um, a lot of the time when you get talking uh, to, to the vendors at trade shows, they basically want to you know, do a deal there and then on the spot. Um, and in my experience at the Canton Fair, they never give you the best prices. Um, you're going to be in a much better negotiating position, um, even if you do want to buy from them, uh, to basically um, uh, not shake the hand there and then uh, on, on the spot. Um, go away, leave it you know, a week, two weeks when you get back, uh, back home, uh, basically start emailing them and then you can, you know, you're going to be in a much better position to push the price down. So uh, basically don't do a deal there and then at the Canton Fair because you're, you're never going to get a, a good deal on the spot. Um, 
And my final tip, just basically real practical stuff, is um, wear a comfy pair of shoes and uh, at your hotel in the morning, uh, basically have a good breakfast because the food at the Canton, uh, the food at the Canton Fair sucks. So um, yeah, make sure you uh, you have good good breakfast before you uh, leave for the day.